Hey, live from Toronto, it's Liquid Lunch. It's me, Hugh, and Tess was my co-host today. Tesla, it's good to have you back in the co-host chair. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, it's great to have Always you here. Always love hanging with the Hugh Meister. It's too bad we weren't broadcasting uh, what was happening before we came live on the air because we've got uh, Lenka Lichtenberg here. Lenka, good to have you back on the show. Thanks for, ha- for having me back. It's great to be back. Okay, now you guys just continue on what you guys were talking about. Okay, I'll just sit back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. You're so funny. Okay. Okay. I'm out of here. Okay. <laughs> so we were talking about music, and you yes. mentioned that as a musician, you feel like it may be a little... Actually, let me just quote you. You said that it was a little insignificant, but mm-hmm. I moved to differ because I believe that music is a very strong, therapeutic uh, uh, thing, being. It's almost like its own energy that we, I think we we kind of push it more to the wayside than we actually give it, um, like really give its true value. And I'd like for you to speak a little bit huh. on that. Well, I agree with you in regards to the importance of music overall, 100%. It's it's huge, and it permeates everything. It's in our thinking. It's in our hearts. It influences us, makes us happy, makes us sad. And it makes us smart if we're playing music, understanding music as children, all of those things. So, yeah, it is huge. I would never dispute that. But what I meant was uh, my music, actually. <laughs> Everybody else's music is what? great. <laughs> but you, what, Lanka? Yes. What the heck are you talking about? <laughs> Well, that's really. She's okay. got a CD, right? I yeah, you know right what? here. Well, I will tell you. I will tell you why tell because me. this is actually CD number fifteen. Wow. And if I count all the little efforts in between, like EPs and collaborations, that's as much as the Beatles. Uh, there you go. So, um, where where you're at this point of your life, as I am now, looking at all that that I've done. Uh, it seems to me that uh, in the overall, the importance of it uh, is not really any. <laughs> so that's actually how, how I kind of feel. Like, I do it because I cannot help myself and because I love it. And that's really who I am. And uh, I, I, I will be making music till the day I die for sure. But it's not because it's important to anyone else but because it's important to me uh, whereas I find that there's a lot of music that's important to lots of people but to me it just seems to me uh, I just do what I do and I love it and uh, there are some people that really enjoy it uh, but overall compared to what is going on in the world that I'm very keenly observing and very involved with or in in many ways Compared to that, it just seems like, who cares? That's what I meant. Um, okay, what, what yeah. um, I mean, what would, why do you think then, I'm just curious, because we're going to get around to your music, <laughs> but why are other musicians uh, so, or their music so important to people, whereas yours, your saying is not necessarily? Uh, because my genres have always been, I have to, talking multiple, uh, have always been very eclectic. They're not in any way mainstream, something that somebody's going to be strongly influenced by in any way. And I think the musics that are important uh, these days are the music uh, uh, creations that speak to the issues today. And uh, uh, there they can be extremely influential and uh, and change people's minds and open people's eyes and this sort of things and and because of what I do uh, and I'm not going to be able to change tracks at this point I don't think um, yes you could I, well actually I that's that like no I'm 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 being bad because I actually will but uh, but uh, uh, what I do is just so so eclectic as I said before it's a very narrow thing so now I do Czech folk music before that it was Yiddish like how many people really understand Czech how many people really understand Yiddish like uh, you know the overall is really very like this it's not exactly 
a pop music uh, no. favorite. No, and, and, and I am not a pop musician, and I'm, uh, I haven't aspired to be one. I yeah. was one as a child. You were? And I, yeah, yeah. Oh, so I've tried cool. that as a child in a theater, singing songs that then people would sing after that, and there were hits and so on. So, so I've tried that, uh, but... Ever since that, it has not been my ambition. I just follow the music that I really like. Okay. And that's really where it falls. So therefore, the uh, massive impact of that cannot absolutely be expected ever. <laughs> well, this yeah. one, I mean, this is your latest CD, yes. right? And this is a Czech, Moravian, and Slovak yes. folk songs yeah. reimagined. Mm -hmm. I mean, what attracted you to, uh, to doing that? Yeah. Um, I am Czech by birth. I was born in Prague. Mm -hmm. And uh, I grew up with those songs. Those are folk songs that my mom and I uh, used to sing in our uh, kitchen about the size of that. <laughs> Tiny kitchen. When we were cooking or washing the dishes, we would always be singing in harmony. And uh, then when I left the country, I took with me that treasure load of, of that folk music. But I never actually sang it again, ever. Mm -hmm. I, I got very deeply into Jewish music. I discovered my Jewish roots. And uh, so I went with that. Uh, and that was the music of my heart and where I felt my mission was to, uh, to really pursue that, to undo some of the historical damage that was done, let's say, to my family uh, as a Jewish family that was more or less uh, wiped out in the Holocaust. So I felt that, that was, that's where I was pulled emotionally and artistically, and I really liked it. So I never considered whether you know this is important to anyone else. It was very important to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've done that for, for, for decades now. And uh, now in the last couple of years, that has changed. Uh, I still am very much a Jewish musician, and, and, I, uh, and I sing in my synagogue and uh, at some Jewish festivals, and, and I still write Yiddish songs. Um, but uh, some years ago now, my mom got really sick with uh, Alzheimer's, and I kept going back and forth to uh, Czech Republic to take care of her. And uh, I started singing them more and more and more, Jewish music, which they were very open to, and uh, uh, somehow being there more often and being with her so much, I felt the need as she was nearing her end to revisit the music of my childhood because she represented that to such a degree. So I felt I needed to do that. I needed to uh, go back to that music. And so this last project is exactly that. I assembled a group of really, really fantastic uh, Czech musicians because it needed to be very authentic, recorded there in Czech, Czech Republic, and um, uh, sort of uh, gave those very known folk songs uh, uh, my own musical aesthetic and, and uh, so it sounds like Wonderful. me still <laughs> yeah like I was going to ask you because these, these are the songs reimagined yes. so how did you reimagine uh, them? well they are uh, the, we, you play with things like uh, I'm sure it, as in every art you know you see something and an artist will interpret it in a different way so, so in my way it is with uh, with rhythms and uh, additions to it and structures and adding a little chorus here and there. And it's just, uh, it becomes something a little bit different, but it's still, I was very careful not to take away the very gentle lyrical beauty, which is actually in those original songs. So I hope it's still there. Um, and that's like the little sweet treasure that's there. But on top of that, it's like a shiny and fun coat. <laughs> <laughs> Very attractive and interesting, you know. Yeah. That's that's what I uh, that's what I was aspiring to do with that. Now, uh, how long has this record been out? It came out in the fall, two thousand and seventeen. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, released by a UK label called uh, Arc Music, so it's an international album, and that label put out also the year before my Yiddish album. Um, so I already have collaborated with them before, and they were very interested in doing this. So that was great. Um, and uh, I first released it uh, in Czech Republic, 
in a theater where I sang as a child. So oh, it was wow. a very emotional Nostalgic. kind of like, whoa, yeah, wow. circle of the highest degree, you know. <laughs> and uh, uh, then here in Toronto was uh, just uh, last month, uh, May 17th, 2018, uh, and uh, at Hughes Room. And that's with a local band of real fantastic uh, musicians. We did that. And we have... Um, engagement also at the Toronto Downtown Jazz Festival coming up in a um, couple weeks, June 26. So that will be also that same program of this Czech, Moravian, Slovak music reimagined. <laughs> so yes. where are you going to be, where, what stage will you be performing? We are in uh, Church of the Redeemer. I think that's on Blue, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's on Bloor and University. I could be wrong, but oh, that yeah. one, isn't that right on there's the, a, the one that yeah Yorkville on the corner that that has oh, that. that has concerts yeah. here usually, right? right? Yeah, yes. I've been to a concert there, so I think that's the one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. By the way, it should be on the poster also. Oh that yeah, poster. I don't know if we can pull that up. Maybe we can. Uh, I can look at it. <laughs> it, would be, it would be at the bottom of it, I think, is, there, yeah, is the address. Be, yeah, 162 Bloor Street West. There you go. So Tuesday, June 26th yeah. at 7 p.m. Now, are you the only one on the bill uh, that night? Yes. Lenka. Well, it's. I call this band Lenka Lichtenberg's Masarek Sextet. So there's six of us, and we are more than enough. <laughs> that's great program. yeah i'm curious so you've got a record label that's working with you too yeah. so what's your fan base like in europe maybe it's not that big here but you know if you're from czech like have you been well received in They're some of the better yeah? yeah yeah i do now a lot more work in europe specifically in czech republic than here like last year i do i think i had like a one tiny little concert in toronto Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the only Canadian appearance in the whole year. And I was, uh, I performed in at least six or seven countries last year, uh, meaning not in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> there were there were beautiful events, beautiful festivals and performances. That, uh, but but here, I don't know. It's just uh, Canada has been really good to me, and I'm very very thankful. But in terms of um, that type of thing, mm -hmm. uh, really getting possibilities to perform here is it's, it's not it's challenging. Good. Yeah, no. no. Do you find that that's a, a thing? Is it related to your music, or is that a musician's challenge? <laughs> well, I'm getting a phone call here. It sounds like a train is coming. <laughs> that channel. The train is coming. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> yes, We're yeah. keeping it real here, Lanka. Okay. And the train is coming. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> from, from right the A train yeah. right now. The A train is right, right now. Right. Yeah, let's go. Right. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Okay. Perfect. So, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm wondering from an artist's perspective if you can, you know, speak to, especially of, of an international, yeah, you know, yen, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you are. What's been some of the challenges that you've experienced as far as promoting I and getting labels to work with you? And you mean you've done 15 works? That's pretty impressive. And you've yeah. CDs. Like, yeah, talk to me about that. Um, I think it's because I have never tried to do anything that would actually interest people. <laughs> That's a terrible thing to say. Okay, we need to hear more about that. Well, because she's interesting. Oh, you know what it is? I've she's already like, said it right in the beginning. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I've always done music. And it was one, like, it's for you. And yes. I like things that are not mainstream. What can I say? That's the unfortunate truth. A very inconvenient truth for this Well, artist. you're fortunate that you can actually support your passion in a way that, you know, you get to be the creator and the, the promoter and... The, all of it, yeah. and, and you, you're doing what you love. Well, yeah, I, I, that's why I'm not complaining. Yeah, I'm just explaining. I'm explaining why I don't have uh, concerts lined up across Canada. It's because, really, to be perfectly honest, how many people do want to go and hear Czech music reimagined? You know, you would need a massive publicity machine behind you to convince people that there's something interesting here, even though they don't understand it. But I do explain, of course, everything. And I do think it sounds great. I really do. And the people that do venture into these performances also think so. Uh, at Hughes, maybe 
some people were Czech and understood and enjoyed, but everybody else was not and enjoyed it equally. Okay. So, uh, so I know the potential is there, but I have never been a great publicity hound of any sort, and I have never really maybe tried hard enough or knew how to make it more accessible and more interesting to people. So I've always just, that, that is really a plus and a minus because I've always been only obsessed with creation. And so that, that's like, I, I just it's pump so one thing out, I just do one thing out, and I am not even finished. And that's exactly what's happening even now. I'm already thinking about the next, the next thing. And so instead of spending now a year pushing this beautiful album like crazy, instead, I'm already saying, okay, 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 the next one is this and that. I'm already planning yeah. it. And that's a big mistake, of course, but I've... I can't get away from it. Yeah, well, you know what it is? It's like like the problem with most creatives. I was a mentor at OCAD University. Okay. And I have a, like my, my whole area is business as it relates to the arts yeah. and, and healthcare, to be honest. But this is the whole challenge with creatives, right? right. You're so busy creating that you miss the business side right. of the, of, of the create, creation. Right. And that in itself can be a creative experience, but not necessarily one that you're passionate about. <laughs> uh, I'm not you know as what I mean? Not passionate about it as, <laughs> as, as ever. As ever. Yeah. So that's, that's where the team sense. comes in. But I you've got this beautiful, um, uh, you know, label that's working with you in Europe. Back yeah. to you know my my question. And so, what are they? How are they helping you to like really support your fan base in in Europe? Uh, because I mean, it is there, right? You've got, you know, the Slavic countries right there. So, yeah, yeah. To- well, um, they they have a good, I guess, network mm-hmm. so that the album gets sold in various places and offered and publicized and it showed up on some charts here and there, uh, which it did actually here as well on some international album charts uh, when it first came out. It, it was, uh, I think, number one for a while. If I remember correctly, wow, which was cool. very nice. Uh, yes, in Canada. So that was very nice. Uh, what, this CD right here? Yes. yes number yes. one in Canada? Yeah, it was. For an I inter- on the international. September, in September, I think it was in uh, September for three weeks. It was the international album in Canada. Yeah. The number one. Yeah, it was. I, I can send some links if you don't believe me. But it no, was, I believe it you. Was That's amazing. Fact. I just want to get the facts out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that was, I think, uh, mainly due to the fact that there there was maybe uh, three or four really fantastically kind radio programmers that just liked it so much that they just kept playing a lot from it all well, the time, that's so and, sweet. and so somehow that that must have created it because I, I could see it on several, but they, they just repeatedly showed up. Yeah, yeah the, the songs from that. Yeah. Wow. So does your label in the UK? Um, book you as well for your gigs they in Europe? They don't, but I, I have a, a, a plan, one of uh, several plans is uh, some UK performances, and I know when I finally get that together, which should be hopefully in the winter, maybe in the spring next year, uh, that they, they do have lots of possibilities for me to where, where to put me. Yes. Like to showcase me and stuff like that. So, yeah. So that's so your label. That, you mean your label yes, has yeah, that? Yeah, that, yeah they right. did. And they mm-hmm. did try. They made the connections, and they said, okay. So when you come to, then I'm gonna fly me there. But if I say, okay, I'm coming, uh, they already know I can be there. There, 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 there. Yeah. So, right. So that's their help, and I uh, know they've been great. Actually, I have no complaints on that. Yeah. And Listen. and the rest is uh, in in Czech Republic. That's really been uh, such a. Treat for me to, to be going back there after all these years, yeah, and uh, and, then, and suddenly find uh, such a fertile ground as the audience being so interested. In now, how old were you when, when you left there? When I left, I was 18. 18, so you were there. I don't want to ask, no, I don't ask. When uh, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you about some other stuff, but okay. uh, <laughs> where did you go after 18? Did you come to Canada? No, after that, I actually spent a couple of years in Denmark. I was in Denmark. Oh, I was an adventurous cool. young person. Yeah. So so I went there and I made a living playing folk music and restaurants. Did and you have to escape? Bars. Uh, sort of? Oh, well, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I know Just this guy. Basically to cough, yes. I know this guy, right? He was, he was Slovak and he had to yeah. escape. Yeah. He was a hockey player. Yeah. So he escaped yeah. during an international tournament. Yeah. Um, really? 
Yeah. Well, that was the way to do it, right? right? You you went somewhere officially and then you just didn't 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 go back. Didn't go back. Yeah. Yes. So you went to Copenhagen or Denmark? I went to Actually, I lived in Aarhus. Aarhus is uh, the second largest city in Denmark. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I went to university there for a couple of years and uh, and I, as I said, um, worked as a folk singer with a guitar sitting up there somewhere where people were eating and I couldn't afford the meal that they were eating. And <laughs> so anyway. But you were making, the, making yeah. the eating experience more fun. <laughs> it was that much better, right? Yeah. And, uh, but then I got a little bit disenchanted with Denmark because I felt it was not open enough to immigrants, actually. Oh, really? It yeah, was okay. at the time. I right. mean, I could have passed, and I did, as a Dane. There was no problem in the looks department. You had but the blonde was, hair. I had the blonde hair and blue eyes, but... Um, I had an accent in Danish, and uh, it's a very difficult language. It's as really, bad as eh? Czech, yeah. And uh, so, so I felt I, I was told actually that as a singer, I was in some singing competitions that that uh, I I can get only this far, and then there is a ceiling because I have an accent, and so I will never be accepted oh. you know, to actually well. It's be a famous singer yeah. in and at that Denmark. time I thought well, that's, that's a thing that's yeah, interesting that to hear that I mean it sounds <laughs> so now you what they would have done with this black girl <laughs> <laughs> I don't know <laughs> the Danish well anyway but oh, I still we have so Denmark. much work to do but anyway but I still I, I love Denmark and I love Scandinavian countries so I, I kind of yeah. forgive them that uh, and then from there I went to Vancouver because uh, I once saw a postcard and Vancouver was just gorgeous and so I thought that was the place to go and see. And actually, I went to a few places. I went to San Francisco, L.A., New York, and Vancouver won. So Vancouver what? Won. So from Denmark, I applied for landed immigrant status. Mm. And because I think I was the only person in Denmark that ever wanted to move to Canada. <laughs> uh, so they had like a quota per country, and there was probably just one. <laughs> so I got it immediately. <laughs> Yeah, Mark was like, Canada is way too third world for us, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I really, I had no explanation, but if I could tell you, that was the funniest thing. I That's go hilarious. to this massive, beautiful Canadian embassy in, in Copenhagen. I'll never forget it. And I, I swear to you, I was the only person there. Yeah. There was like three Clarks sitting there, and then me. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I, I believe it, because I've been to Europe. I've been, I've been to... Scandinavian countries quite a few times and you know <laughs> I have to agree with her with them because it's kind of like, why, why leave? you want to leave right? yeah yeah you know they ride bikes there right and they have their electrical wires <laughs> underground and stuff so I mean just yeah. from those two things alone it's yeah. like oh, yeah. no, I, 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 <laughs> I totally agree but if you have an accent it's not they're not gonna the do, yeah they're not rolling out the red carpet somebody who yeah. needs to speak and sing so, yes so and here, Vancouver then was amazing. Yeah. And so you found it. you found Vancouver to be amazing, not like an open as everybody well. Everybody had an accent, mm-hmm. and I had a lot of work, and I continued to work as a folk singer, and then I joined a rock band, and I was on cruise lines. What band? Been, Anybody we oh, know? Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> Come on, tell which one was it? <laughs> it was terrible. I sang an operatic style. I sang like Judas Priest, if you can imagine. You you, a, you actually did Judas Priest songs? We did. Did you do another because thing coming? In operatic style. Because I was trained in, I, <laughs> I, I skipped a little thing. I actually was operatic. I Amazing. was trained in opera. So I had this high singing voice, which meanwhile has come down a little. But I had definitely an operatic voice. Yeah. And I could modify it enough so it passed through the folk music. But I joined this heavy metal band. They oh. liked me because I looked cute and I was in black leather. For the, I had to be yeah, the part of it, right? Sure. So, so, um, so they got me for the band as a lead singer. Yeah, except I had that voice, right? <laughs> but they were not cha- They were not willing to, not even uh, choose the right repertoire for me or transpose the song. So if it was like a really completely impossible key for me to sing in, yeah. that didn't matter. I still had to do it because that's how it was written and the guitars could only play it yeah. that way. Because oh. they're rock musicians, they're not actual <laughs> That's <musicians>. right. <laughs> well, no, they were very good musicians. But they were not willing to adjust to their chick singer. Right, right, right. Okay, Lenka, what was that band called? I'm not telling you! <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should see if we can find some YouTube.
YouTube feed, right? Oh, it's my so God. She's not it telling us. So I, I, I have some recordings, and I heard that a while back, um, and I thought, like, I, I, I can't believe. I, I sang so badly because I just couldn't sing that material at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Yes. Well, listen, um, it's great to have you here today. Now, okay, so let's just uh, tell people, where can they get the CD if they really, you know... Hey, in my hometown, we have a Slovak Hall, right? You do? Yeah. In fact, the first wedding I ever went to was at the Slovak Hall. Nice. So there's lots of Slovaks in Ontario and Czechs and uh, Moravians. Yeah, <laughs> Moravians. Right? Where can people get their hands on the CD? Uh, they can, first of all, they should come to this concert. After I spent the entire interview telling you how not important this music is, <laughs> I have to tell you, it's very beautiful. So you should come to the concert. Yes. July. Yeah, at June, the Church of the June, Redeemer, June, right? right? Yes. June, June 26th, that's only in a couple Festival. of weeks. It's in a couple of weeks. And, of course, you can get the CD there, or you can get it through my website, or you can get it on iTunes, of course. Arc Music has a, uh, sells on Apple Music and right. iTunes. And but we're going to send them to your website, yeah. lankalichtenberg.com. And, uh, and you're already working on your next record. What's your, what direction are you going to go for your next one? Well, yeah, so that will be exactly, I, I will try to actually sing in a language that people understand. Which language? That's English. English. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, feeling the, I'm feeling the English vibes happening here. That's great. <laughs> so I'll Yay. come back when we have that, and then maybe some of the songs will be actually a little more relevant. I don't know. We'll are you going to write any, are, are you going to write, do you do, I mean, are you going to do any original songs? I have for the tons. Next time? But they never fit on any of the records that I'm doing. So I have like a slew of maybe 20 extremely fantastic English language songs that have never been able to to use for anything. So it's time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's time. Especially if you have that many, you might as well put an album together of just that music. That's right. You're you're there. And I'll be right back here talking to you about it. That sounds great. That would be awesome. Yes. That's what we'll do. Yeah, Lenka, I'm actually looking forward to that. (laughs) Oh, we're going to watch a video now, right? Yes. Which video are we going to watch? We're going to watch one of the songs on this album, Masaryk. Uh, it's called Gdoma po Černu Galanku. Doma Čolen Yeah. <laughs> and actually, it's... That was great. That was pretty close. Uh, <laughs> it was recorded... That video was filmed here. Uh, Where? Yeah. It's on... Uh, now, what's this beautiful building? Uh, uh, uh. Okay. can't remember. Anyway, here in Toronto, it was recorded with great cast of people, as you will see. Fantastic. Fabulous. Okay, great to see you again. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Thank Lankalichtenberg.com. And uh, here's the video from the CD, Masaryk. And um, we're going to come back after this with Dr. Scott Levine, uh, Regenerative Medicine and Health Policy. It's going to be fun. Okay. We're thatchannel.com. Kdo má po černu kalanku, ligu tala sa hvězdička, anděl můj. Kdo má po černu kalanku, ten má pokojnu myšlenku, ligu tala sa
Ligotala sa hviezdička, anjel môj Priložíme líca kričku Odbavíme večeričku Ligotala sa hviezdička, anjel môj Priložíme líca kričku Odbavíme večeričku Ligotala sa hviezdička, anjel môj Priložíme lí